What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of the Team Building Podcast. Welcome, everybody. We've got a phenomenal guest with us. Josh Menti is here today, and he's going to share his story of essentially rebuilding a team from the ground up that's now on track to do 400 unit sales this year and around 70 million in volume. We'll get into all that good stuff. We've also got Jeff Cohn here, the man, the myth, the legend. As always, Jeff, you're, you're What's back. What's happening? Yeah, man, the man, I'm the here. myth, the legend. We're doing it, and I appreciate it. Great introduction. Thank you, Matt. And uh, Josh and I oh, – uh, six... so we main... Sorry, I'm getting some reverberation. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, but, uh, hey, so I'm really pumped. Uh, about a couple about six months ago, I met Josh for the first time. And, of course, we knew of each other, but I never had the opportunity to meet. And I ended up uh, probably spending two or three hours talking with him at the rooftop in Charleston, South Carolina. And at that time, I was like, dude, I got to get you on my podcast. So I'm so excited today to be able to finally get him here. He has a lot of really unique strategies. So if you're just coming in the beginning – and you're not sure you want to stick around, this is one you're going to want to w listen to. Uh, we're going to be talking about different strategies in and around our business to expand into other businesses. So hang out, and, and we're excited to have you here, Josh. Josh, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate their uh, time and, and uh, love listening to your podcast, so it's great to be a guest. No, thanks, man. Well, give us, uh, for those that don't already know you, and I'm sure there's a lot of people maybe in, in the Boomtown or even the Infusionsoft world that do know who you are, um, but for those that don't, give us just a quick kind of 60-second bio, who you are, where you are, and what you do. Yeah, so we're uh, located in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, trade name is the uh, MD Home Team, so we service the Baltimore metro area. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Getting over a little bit of cold, so hopefully it gets a little better. But um, <laughs> anyway, you know, I was in the mortgage business uh, that collapsed and uh, needed to do something else. And in 2008, I had an opportunity to sell bank owned properties for somebody I knew from the mortgage business. So that kind of kick started uh, getting in and just grinding it out as an agent, you know. And then, you know, from there, for about the next five years or so, I just kind of was had a couple of assistants, but it was all revolving around me. So it was difficult to take vacation or have any fun or be with my family. And, you know, just from there, I was like, okay, I'm either getting out of the business or I'm going to turn it into a business. And that was really my focus from there forward is how do I grow and make this an actual business that doesn't revolve around me. Very cool. And, and just kind of flash forward to where you're at right now. Um, just give us an idea of real quick, what's the structure of the team? Yeah. So we have um, on, on this business, the MD home team, we have 20 people total. Actually, just had two new hires yesterday and one leaving, so it might be 21, but somewhere in that ballpark. And basically, we have 10 agents. I have an operations manager, myself. Um, we have a transaction coordinator. We have a VA in the Philippines supporting. Uh, we have a listing coordinator. We have a, a bookkeeper. Um, we have someone who helps with some compliance and like uh, complaints and and mentoring and training of our agents and things like that. And I probably missed somebody. So if you're watching, I apologize, but it was, <laughs> it's about 20 people total. All right. Awesome. All right. And just real quick, are your agents specialized, non-specialized? Yeah. So if you're on our team, you're one of three things, basically. You're either a listing specialist, you're a buyer specialist or an investor specialist. Um, they're really, we allow people to float in between on their own self-generated stuff just to incentivize it. Just what we've done, we found success with it. <clears throat> we found that people kind of shy away from their buyer's agent and you know, they they don't actively go out and look for a listing if they're just developing a listing to hand to somebody else. It's what we do, yeah, I don't know if it's yeah. right or wrong, but basically yeah, and we want to get into other. that. We yeah. want to get into that because it feeds into the other conversation we want to have about the horizontal businesses that you've got going that all kind of feed into each other and that's a very interesting. Um, so we'll get to that here in a second. But so you and Jeff uh, met up at, at the Boomtown event and kind of had an interesting conversation. And Jeff, what was it that stuck out to you about Josh's story? Um, you know, Josh and I have come across others, had a business partner, and they decided to go different directions. And I'll let Josh speak to the story. But what was interesting to me wasn't the fact that his team was so successful prior to the split, but was the fact that his mindset was very uh, forward thinking and he continued to want to build and it was able to do that even after the team split up and for anyone that's had a large team I know of teams up to 50 to 100 agents where they split and half the agents go one way and half go the other that can be somewhat deflating when you're used to being at the top and then have to drop down 20 notches or whatever and have to rebuild and Josh chose to go that route and rebuild and has obviously been very successful at it so that's what caught my attention the most yeah so Josh, tell um, us a little bit about how that how that went and, and how it played out. Yeah, you know, so 
when you set forth in in uh, courting or or um, engagement and in your planning and that kind of stuff. So when we were joining our teams, you know what ended up happening after that wasn't exactly what we set off. But people change, things change, things happen, business grows. We have the, all this growth. Sometimes you drift apart, whatever it might be. And the basis is basically, I'm trying to go in one direction. He was trying to go in a different one and it just didn't work anymore. So I wasn't afraid to step up and say, hey, it's just not working. Let's go our separate ways. He's got a successful business now. I've been able to get back to where we were and we'll exceed it. You know, cause I, when you get to, to the bottom of it, like I'm, if you follow and you use disc profiles or anything like that, I'm a 99 B. I will make it happen. It's going to happen. Write it down. It's done. That's just the way that it is. So, you know, like I have the utmost belief in myself, right. To be able to build a business bigger than myself. Cause it's my mission. It's my goal. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's talk about how, how you recovered quickly. What was that like? So that the team kind of, each of you go your separate ways. What was, what was the mentality and what were your first kind of action steps when you hit the ground and say, okay, now I'm fully in control and I want to get back to where I was and, and even more than that as quickly as possible. What were those first few steps? Yeah. I mean, the good thing is, you know, in that we had systems in place that I'd built um, mm -hmm. and marketing and all that kind of stuff. So it really wasn't like starting from scratch. What ended up happening, which was, I think unique is that each of us sat everybody down and said, you know, it's a divorce. You're welcome to go wherever you want, including him, me, or just off on your own. So about half the sales team came with me and about half went with him, which was great. You know, we each had our own seeds to start from. <clears throat> the operations manager I was grooming went the other way. I was actually able and fortunate enough to get someone with a high level experience, just the way stars align uh, to come in. Now he's taking that off my plate. So if you ever read the book like um, Rocket Fuel, so I've gone from operating in between a vision and a um, an integrator aspect to really what I'm passionate about, focusing more on vision and growth. And he's a tremendous integrator. So like it's just a marriage made in heaven, really, honestly. Gotcha. Where's that Where's that mindset come from, Josh? Where do you Who do you credit um, some of those ideas? Because I know even before we jumped on, you had kind of talked about not being the agent, servicing all the leads, and being that rock star. Um, you had the mindset of owning a business that could kind of run without the necessity of you servicing. I, I know there's some books out there I've read that kind of speak to that. Where, where did your mindset come from? Two books. If you're talking about books specifically, two books. I think that if you want to do anything in business and be an entrepreneur, the e-myth, right? It's just fundamental basics. Like this is what you have to do. This is what it is. Anybody who's doing any type of business will read this book and identify with it. At some point, you'll put yourself in there and say, oh my gosh, I'm doing that. Or I don't want to do that. That's what I don't like. So that book, I think, is a foundational aspect for me. From there, where you know things went in a different direction was Rocket Fuel basically was able to verbalize, or at least in my head verbalize when I was reading, what I truly believe like takes to to succeed. And if you take it, you know, if you look at like say uh, Apple, right? So you have Steve Jobs, who was, you know, probably the greatest visionary of our time in some respects. And then you have Wozniak, who's the integrator, right? So like without one or the other, you don't really have anything, right? So you can think all you want, you have all the vision you want, but if somebody can't implement it, there really isn't gonna go anywhere. There's gonna be attraction to it. So, and that's the follow-up book. It's Gina Wickman, I think is the author. And then traction is basically the implementation, how you bring it into your business. So those kind of things, um, you know, I'm a true believer that you have to put yourself around peers, right? So as the tide rises, so does all ships, right? So I'm part of mastermind groups in REO world. Uh, personally and professionally, is a, a Go Abundance is a group of guys, about 150 uh, guys around the country who are doing things at a high level. I'm putting myself in these situations to have conversations with people to give back, right? So I have things to give, but there's also things I can take. So I think that combination of reading and growing and doing and implementing and putting yourself around people like yourself who are doing things at a high level, you know, naturally things are just going to come out and you're going to be able to connect the dots and make things happen. Cool. I know before we jumped on, we had talked a little bit about some of the additional businesses that have kind of spun, <clears throat> spun off of the successful real estate team. Why don't you walk our audience through quickly what some of those business entities are and then what your goal is going into the future for creating additional business flows. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, basically what we have is a real estate team at the foundation and we have the belief that, uh, auxiliary businesses can feed each other. 
So we have a uh, flipping business, right? So what we do is direct mail marketing and flipping. Now we have sellers calling and raising their hands saying, I want to sell a home. Not every house is made to be, you know, needs money put into it to sell. So then listing leads come back over into our business so we can feed it back and forth. And with this thought process, basically you're going down, creating additional revenue streams, additional businesses that are running silos next to each other. Same time, those leads are also presenting opportunities to go out and buy rental properties or amassing a rental portfolio. And then from that, there's basically three separate businesses. Once we get enough scale with that, we'll be able to bring and start a management company in-house to manage for the sole purpose of our properties, but also then you know scale it into a business that manages other people's properties as well. Um, and if you look at it, like we have a large investor business in our business, uh, which really spawns from our, my start in REO, because we get a lot of phone calls and we have a big database. Now we can go back after them and say, hey, who's doing your property management, right? So, and do that. And then once we scale and we grow and we're doing 60, uh, you know, uh, flips a year, that's our goal for next year. You know, then we can bring construction in-house and we start hiring um, project managers. And then basically I always get approached because I've been, you know, rehabbing houses for 17 years. Do you know anybody that can rehab my house? I like what you do, can you do that? No, I don't do it for anybody else. I'm not a general contractor. So really in the end, the vision is over a five year period to basically have five businesses running side by side. It gives you economies of scale so you can have not, if you ran five businesses separately, you'd need five different bookkeepers, right? But you can get a controller that controls all of it, right? If you need five businesses, you have five operations managers, right? So you have somebody who operates as like say a CFO or a COO who then manages operations and all the businesses. So you really get that you know, vertical integration that I think really becomes very powerful when the businesses actually feed each other back and forth. Dude, that's awesome. You're doing a great job and it's impressive. And not a lot of agents across the country, I don't think are taking full advantage of additional businesses. There are some arguments out there to say that, you know, why not be great at one thing? Why spread into these other businesses? But to me, it totally makes sense from a strategic standpoint. If you're running a real estate business, why not be buying rentals? If you're buying rentals, why not sell some of those deals off to your investor list as wholesale deals and flip a couple properties? And if you're flipping, you're already fixing them up and rehabbing them yourself. Why not build an additional stream of income through a construction business? And then, of course, I've taken this into owning a title company and an insurance company and a call center. Most of the business entities I own, I own them because I saw a dysfunction with what was already offered in the industry. And so I built it myself. And I think yep. you've answered that call as well yourself. So we have a very similar trajectory. What I would say for anyone listening that's overwhelmed because they kind of want to do it, but it just seems like too much, just take one at a time. Like you don't have to do all those things at once. And I like that about Josh. Josh doesn't have property management yet. He doesn't have the uh, general contractor license yet to do other people's properties. He knows that's in the future. So he's cognizant of it. Start with just buying rentals and flipping one house a year. Buy one rental a year, flip one house a year. It was our goal this year, my team, was to acquire 12 properties, flip eight of them and hold four. And we ended up doing over 50 acquisitions. We flipped 24 and we held 27 doors, which totals over $2 million in, um, in real estate, of which we have over 50% equity because we're buying them 30% below market value. So that's this will be a whole different <laughs> podcast in the future, but there's so many strategies, man. You We all have these real estate teams and there's other ways to generate income while still focusing on the, the machine that's feeding everything else. And I think that's the dysfunction is people get caught up in another thing and don't have the right people in place. Who are your right people, Josh? Walk everyone kind of through your back office and who's running things when you're not there. Yeah, so uh, Michael Patterson is our operations manager. He's basically the glue, right? So just like today, we sat in an L10 meeting, um, you know, and said, what's okay, an L What's an L10 meeting? Oh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, it comes from the book Rocket Fuel. Level 10 is what it stands for. How to have a, you know, if you're rating things one to 10, how do you make your meetings a 10 basically is what it is. And there's a, a specific protocol that you go through. Uh, it's an hour and a half, no, no more, no less. Um, Why don't you spend one, one minute, walk us through some of the best practices of an L10 meeting. Awesome, I'll break it down probably in 60 seconds. You start by, you know, basically positive um, energy. So you tell something good in business and personal. Uh, then you go through basically, um, and everybody that's involved in whichever, you know, it's in the meeting, that's everybody goes through. So you get started on the right page. <clears throat> then you go through uh, numbers, basically your key metrics for that business for that week. So it's a weekly touch base on where we're at. Are we up, are we down? 
Uh, and then basically after that, you talk about your third quarter rocks. I'm sorry, fourth quarter now that we're in that you've already set. These are the big things that we have to progress forward in the business in order to keep that business going and rolling forward. And then basically you touch back on the action items from the week before. Did you complete or did you not, right? It's not a discussion. It's an accountability thing. Did you get it done or didn't you? You know, if it sits there for two weeks, okay, drop it down, talk about it. What's going on? Why are you not taking this serious? What's going on, right? So, and then from there, you have an issues list that builds from the week you know, the, the prior week, basically everybody who's in that meeting has access to put it on there. It's just in a Google doc. And from there, we prioritize which of those items we want to touch on. It's basically, instead of sending an email, Hey, what's going on this, that you just condense it down in that meeting. And then you just, from those issues, you come up with action items that go on for the next week. And it's yep. pretty, it's simple. It sounds do have, simple. You, do you have this similar meeting in any of the other businesses that you run? All of them. I, so Josh sounds laugh. exactly I, like me. We do a one hour accountability with every business entity. When people will come to my workshop, I bra I've bragged on podcasts. That I only work five hours a week in my Omaha's elite real estate business. I work yeah. another 30 hours a week in all the other businesses, but the place I like to be the most is at that meeting, holding people accountable, talking strategy and thinking bigger picture. And obviously you've done a great job with that. So speaking to just the real estate team, who would be the key person, personnel and or direct reports that you've empowered to run the team so that you could go on to do these other business ventures? Basically the operations manager. I'm still operating as sales manager. It's the last piece for me to fully extract myself out. <clears throat> as a um, business owner or CEO, you're basically three things, your vision, capital, and accountability. So once I can get somebody in to hold the agents accountable, I can then focus on the vision and growing the capital solely, right? And holding the people like that accountable. So really in our business, um, there's only one direct report to me, and that's actually basically our uh, director of operations and finance, Michael Patterson. Mm -hmm. um, and then the agents, you know, um, I'm dealing with at this point, there isn't a, a direct report there. So in the end, what's going to end up happening is that basically there's um, a work between with, with the uh, operations manager and myself, say so you call it direct report, whatever you want to call it. And then a sales manager to me, because I'll continue to handle managing and accounting that. So that's yeah, really. So you'll, you'll have two directs. One will be sales manager. One will be ops manager. Ops manager will probably oversee admin and back office and your sales manager 100%. will oversee the agent team. So that's what I, I built that four years ago. Um, and it changed. It literally empowered me an additional, what, 20 hours. How much time do you think, Josh, you're spending in then text message, an email, a phone call from all these individual agents, then a one-on-ones, if you're doing accountability meetings every week or once a month, it yeah. bogs you down, does it not? It does, it does, right? So it's sometimes hard to see the forest through the trees, right? So there's a difference between um, being busy and being purposeful, right? So like sometimes people get in the mindset like, oh, I was so busy, well, what'd you do all day? Your, your email was open. Like I literally have had to deprogram myself I only check emails at 9, 12, and 5. Eventually, I'm only going to check them once a day. I'm just not far enough out of it. I don't have that sales manager to do that because, you know, it's it's there's a converse relationship, right? So it will command your time. It's supposed to be there for efficiency and communication, but really it cannibalizes your time because you don't realize when you keep it open, they just keep popping up and things happen. Right. So there's a little is software it, called is, Inbox Pause. This group, use, we, this group, I'm going to interrupt real quick too, just for fun, because Josh is go abundance and I was in the group for a couple of years and I, I'm probably going to rejoin the group and it is an incredible group of people. Um, at, they talk a lot about being intentional and not having limiting beliefs and having, using power language. So when Josh says, I don't have a success manager, Josh has intentionally chosen not to. And all of us that are guilty for not having certain things, it's because we chose so far in our business not to do it. And that might be part of his overall strategy. It sounds like he's a very strategic person and he has chosen up to this point not to do it. He, um, just like with your email example here, you said you check it three times a day. Eventually it's going to be once a day. And now I know you're going on to explain that strategy. Um, last year I chose to hire a full-time personal assistant. She checks all my email. So I no longer have to look at email at all. So for anyone that thinks they have to do whatever they think they have to do, you don't have to do any of it. What you have to do is put someone in place to do it for you. And that is the definition of leverage. Go Absolutely. on, Josh. 100%, man. It brings, anytime I get something off my plate, it's the best day, right? You know? right. right. Yeah, it's like, it's good because it's going to free me up to do other things that are more um, important, you know, because really we're stewards, right? When you really look at it, we're building businesses that are feeding 20 families, right? 
So fast forward five years, we're feeding 100 families, right? Yeah. What is that's more important, right, to do and build the legacy and for me and my children and to create a different way of life, you know, where I'm not um, slaving away 80 hours a week and things like that. So, yeah, it's like what you focus on, right? And what you, and I know I got a little sidetracked there, but what you become, um, you know, what you focus on, you will become, right? So like I'm yep. focusing on trying to get more efficient and extracted from the business so I can focus on the bigger picture, right? And that bigger picture is when I can capture hours back, like you're talking about, you know, at some point I'm going to hire a personal assistant and she's going to, he or she's going to check my email as well, right? Amongst a lot of other things, because it's going to free my time in nine to five or whatever that looks like, I don't know, yeah. seven to eight or whatever yeah. it is, to focus on things that are going to build uh, businesses or progress businesses forward or lay that foundation for whatever's coming yeah. next. And one, one comment I'd like to make to our audience is I have never, and I know you have never been intentional to free up time so we didn't have to work. I think the public thinks when they hear about people that choose to scale their business and use leverage, I think they think of this CEO sitting up on this you know, ivory tower looking down on everyone saying, ha, 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 look at these people working. We're still working as hard, if not harder. We're working smarter, and we're refocusing our energies and our strategies um, and deploying those into the people that are now running our businesses. Just speaking For to sure. your L10 meeting, that's where your intent is, and I know you're like me. I'm also a 99D. Um, that's where my passion is, and so it's empowered me to get to do the things I love. I'm still working. I'm just working in a different way and in a different role, and I had to be intentional. Um, there's a lot of little quotes people have out there, but I think one that I've always liked is where you spend your time is who you are and, and yeah. who, you'll, will, who you will become. So um, you're now trying to shift out of the mode of being success manager. I think that's your number one thing. And for audience members listening, I can tell that that's probably your number one thing to allow you to propel some of those other business ventures. Let's get out of your real estate team. Speak to the next business that you started um, in addition to the real estate team. I, I'm assuming it was the flipping business. Yep. And who are the so people always, now running that business for you? Yeah. So I have a partner in that business. Um, and he's running basically the marketing and the sales. Um, so he's uh, the fulfillment of all of our direct mail as well as the inbound calls and stuff like that. Uh, we have a admin in that business who's handling a lot of the other stuff. Um, and then there's myself. And it's the same thing. I'm bringing vision to the organization. I'm bringing what are we going to do next? How are we going to structure it? You know, so on and so forth. Yep. What we decided to do is actually because we have such a great operations manager in uh, our business, on the, the real estate team, is that we're integrating him in the operations role. So we're trying to grow it <clears throat> beyond a side hustle and into a full scale business that's kind of running on its own. You're, you're trying to integrate your real estate team's operations manager into the flipping business? That's correct. Yes. Um, okay. Because as these businesses are, you know, synergistically running next to each other, there's things and ways that he's going to be able to identify to get efficiencies. Okay. So if we're using certain softwares and one, not the other, um, why am I dealing with a bookkeeper when I have somebody in this business dealing with a bookkeeper? So right. it's just growing pains. We're not big enough to hire it, right? So, right. you know, we're a year and a half in and we'll do probably 20, 22 home sales this year, flip wise. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have four rentals, a little behind on that, but, you know, is what it is and as we get purposeful and my time can be allocated into this business to focus more on what we're doing next this mm -hmm. business should see maturity out of it and things like that yeah. so, so I, i've know, seen in, in some of the businesses we've created i've seen crossover i've actually been intentional about crossover um in some yeah. ways it's positive in some ways it's negative um yeah. it's hard to try to allocate if you own two separate businesses and one has a partner and one doesn't and you're paying for that ops manager as an example and let's say they're making a hundred thousand a year then the businesses have to have a conversation and say, how much does business A have to pay per year? And how much does business B have to pay per year? And is that individual actually working that much time? So I think in the ideal world, and I think Josh would agree with this, you wanna try, I would suggest keeping these separate, both from legal entities and corporations, how you have them set up, and the personnel that work within the organizations. It's gonna make things a lot easier in the long run. But in the beginning, you're gonna have crossover, and I think that's completely natural. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's, um. A quote, and this goes back to what you were talking about that I always use, iron sharpens iron, right? It's actually a proverb. And this is what you bring into anything you do, right? So if you have uh, people that are really good at what they do, right, they'll bring that level to the next, right? So like in our, like you said, success manager, when we're doing our accountability, if I'm there and I'm teaching and training and mentoring that next person to do that, it is what we do collectively as a whole, iron sharpens iron, you know, therefore we'll all be stronger. 
Yeah, I love um, it. That's awesome. I totally agree. Yeah. Well, and Josh, it sounds like I just wanted to go back real quick to to the part that you haven't handed off to somebody yet, and and the the whole point of having three or four or five businesses that feed off one another is at some point that eighty twenty rule. There there's a vital few within those, and it sounds like the sales and marketing of the core real estate team is really what drives and and pulls everything forward. And so, rightfully so, that's the last thing. It sounds like that you're handing off like you're still heavily involved in that sense because that is that is the um, essentially the goose that lays the golden egg yeah for sure um you know much like if you're growing uh from a single agent the last thing you hand off is your listings right so as you go through this progression even in business there's last pieces that come off right so you have to really kind of sit down and evaluate where's my time being spent and where is the dollar productive activity right marketing and sales is the dollar productive activity you know, beyond that, uh, all the stuff becomes minutia in a certain aspect. It all needs to be done. And it's all vitally important to the business itself. But where if I can find a new lead source or if I can, you know, bring somebody into production, that's what's going to drive revenue to the business, which is really how you sustain. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I know we've got, there's a lot of, uh, of other directions we could go and, and there's there's some very cool things you've done with the, the sales and marketing, especially the automation on the back end that I'd love to get into. Uh, we talked about potentially bringing you on to uh, Greg Harrelson's podcast, which would be awesome and let you guys really chat back and forth on how you've uh, worked in FusionSoft and integrated that into the business. But unfortunately, we don't have time to go down that, uh, that rabbit hole because that's a very deep rabbit hole. Um, so let people know kind of where they can reach out and connect with you, especially if they have referrals in your area, or if they just want to, uh, yeah. to connect a mastermind with you. Absolutely. Uh, so our website is uh, www. That probably goes without saying anymore, but uh, mdhometeam.com. Uh, so that is uh, the MD, like Maryland, home team .com. Um, And you'll be able to get any type of contact information, uh, see who our team is, what we're doing, get a feel for it. Um, and that's a Boomtown website. So it's probably familiar. A lot of people I think they have 3,000 platforms across the country. Cool. Um, you can also reach out uh, to me directly, Josh at the MD home team .com. Um, And you can also call our main office uh, to get in touch at 410. 3949114 uh that's probably all the best ways to get in touch direct i'm on facebook twitter our businesses are as well you know it's whatever you know how it is man people contact everybody from different ways but i'm easy to find i'm out there <laughs> um and uh be more than happy to help out however i can Awesome. Awesome. And then there's a couple comments I want to get to in a second, but Jeff, real quick, I know you wanted to mention a little bit about the, uh, the upcoming workshop and the live yep. stream. So we have a special discount. Um, normally our team building workshops, 2997, that includes bringing one guest access to our Google drive for life, um, and access to our private Facebook page, um, in November and December, because it's a little bit chillier in Omaha, Nebraska, we usually don't have as large of a turnout. And so we would like to offer anyone that wants to attend our workshop in November or December a 50% off discount. All you need to do is when you go to jeffsworkshop.com, put in half off, one slash two off, and you will receive that discount. That's only for the November and December upcoming workshop. So you can check out all the dates, information about the workshop, other value adds that you're going to get um, in November or December by coming out to our workshop. The other comment I wanted to make, and it's fun that Josh is on and is on Boomtown, Boomtown just created a deal with Elite Real Estate Systems, which is our coaching arm. And anyone that's on the Boomtown platform today and anyone that's going to join the Boomtown platform moving forward, as of this podcast, will receive a $500 off a month discount to Boomtown by joining Elite Real Estate Systems live stream product. So the live stream product, every week on Wednesdays and Fridays, we stream um, our team's training. We have a $50,000 production studio in my office and we stream all that content live and it's available in our video library. And then every Thursday we have a high level stream that we put out for team leaders and broker owners. Um, it totals 12 hours of video content a month. In addition to that, the team leader or broker owner gets a weekly success call for 10 to 15 minutes with my team success manager. There's all sorts of other perks for that product. If you want to learn more about it, go to erslivestream.com. But to get $500 off, Josh, you essentially could join our live stream product for free. Um, and Boomtown did this because they believe that clients with ERS live stream are going to stay clients of theirs longer. And so they're doing it as a lost leader today with the belief that those that align with our coaching product 
are going to end up staying with their software solution for a longer time. So that's effective now. I can't promise that that discount is going to be out there a year from today. So for anyone that's thinking about joining Boomtown or is already a Boomtown client, jump on board with uh, ERS Livestream. I think you guys will be very impressed with what we're doing right now with that. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, a couple comments for, for you specifically, Josh. Alicia Alicia Crestel is watching. She says, what about Josh's mindset? I think that's such a huge part of, uh, of your success. He believes he can do anything and reads everything there is to know about something he's trying to do to speed up his rate of success and learning curve. So I just wanted to ask you about that, Josh, real, real quick in the last couple minutes we got left. How do you approach that when you're looking to solve a new problem? Like, let's say I want to generate a new source of leads into my business. How do you attack that? So first of all, Alicia is awesome. She's here in our market and she's such a great girl. And I always want to encourage her to, you know, reach, you know, shoot for the stars, land on the moon, you know, so she's an awesome person. Um, you know, honestly, when you get down to it, I am just as curious as you can possibly get. Like when I get my horns locked on something, I'm going to find it. But what I do is I usually go through, you know, a lot of people will go say into Google and try and Google something. I try and put myself in a network of people where if it's a, say it's a system related question, I would call Jeff, say, Hey man, I got this problem going on. Da, da, da. Just go direct to the source. You know, people are willing to help, you know, if you're also willing to give, right? So mm -hmm. um, I generally reach out first to someone who knows someone. If I don't know that person directly that does it at a higher level than me. A lot of times those people say, read this book. It'll change your perspective on X. Right. Um, and then from there, you know, I, I have a library of books that I'm trying to get through. I had a goal of reading 24 this year, uh, which I posted on Facebook to hold uh, my friends hold me accountable. Unfortunately, I may fall short of it because I took some vacations and have been focusing on some other things Story. and not reading as much as Story. I possibly should. So, I have about a dozen read right now, so I have uh, three months left to read 12. So. And I'm not cheating. I'm not doing audio books. It's all actual reading. So. Ooh, yes. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. Josh. <laughs> what were you saying, um, Jeff? Story? Is that, is that a go yeah, bonus thing to uh, Yeah, to and go bonus that when is. someone starts yeah. making it. He's like, on vacation, he's not reading his books. On the airplane, he's not reading his books. The real reason is you, he didn't make it intentional. He knows that. And that's impressive, yeah. dude. To read one a month, I think, is impressive. I think should, everyone should have the goal of reading one book a month. Um, and if you can do any more than that, power to you. Uh, Gary Keller also says he reads 52, but you don't have to read the whole book. If you get the answer from the book of what you're looking for in your business, then be done with it. Rocket Fuel, I was done after the fourth chapter. I'd heard enough about it. A lot of people told me about it. I got a couple things out of it and I was done. I put it on the shelf and moved to the next book. So don't ever feel like you have to read a book cover to cover. Just open it up, get what you think you need to get out of it and move on to the next one. Yeah. Cool. And you know, I also think there comes a point where, like, where I have to decompress what I'm learning. Right. So like I can just constantly, constantly, constantly like, you know, internalize information, but then I don't actually do anything with it. Right. So if you're just in always that learning mode um, and, and I think you're always in a learning mode. So I may have said that incorrectly, but well, if totally you're constantly makes sense. Back -time, what's up? No, you're totally dead on, dude. There's so many, there's so much content grab. Everyone's going to workshops. They listen to podcasts. They're reading books and they're bringing it all in so fast, but they're not applying it. And it's pointless. If you're getting this, the knowledge and you're not implementing it, then why don't even get the knowledge? So by taking yeah. knowledge that you believe in and not doing something with it, you're not going to exude change in your business. And so I think sometimes sure. it's smarter to slow down with the information grab and try to make changes in your business. Spend six months watching those changes, seeing if you know what happened, what you wanted to have happen happens, and then move on to grab more information and not be constantly just grabbing information. Absolutely. 100% agree. 100%. Agree. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we are out of time for today. So just wanted to thank you, Josh and Jeff, guys, for being here. That was an awesome, awesome conversation. I know a lot of people were watching us live and getting a lot out of it and commenting and all that good stuff. Um, so, guys, uh, make sure to check us out, um, especially go to iTunes. Guys, do us a favor. If you get a lot out of this podcast, Josh is obviously uh, a listener, and we're getting to the point now where a lot of the people that we bring on the podcast uh, have listened to the podcast first, which is amazing. So we know there's a lot of you out there that are getting a ton of value out of the guests that we bring to you. So do us a favor. Go to iTunes, leave us a nice uh, review and a rating there. Just let us know what you think. Of course, if there's anything we can do to improve the show, please let us know that too. Um, so please do that for us as a, a big, big favor and a thank you to the guests who essentially give their time away for free. I mean, this is stuff that uh, if you were to pay for an hour of consulting with guys like Jeff and Josh, we're talking, you know, one, two, three grand minimum. So you're essentially getting this for, uh, for free. So be sure to thank them by, with that. Go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Check out everything that we've got going on with the workshop and the live stream product and all that good stuff. And until next time, guys, thank you so much. And Jeff, we'll see you on the next one.
All right. Thanks, guys. Take it easy.